All right, so what are some characteristics of exponential growth, or, as I heard some of y'all saying, maybe because it's spooky season, decay. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll just throw out terms. What did you say, exponentiate? Wow, okay. Exponentiate. Oh, my goodness. I think we're playing the wrong game here. Exponentially. Gosh, dang it. This I'm not saying what are words that have the same root. <laughs> Is that Kawhi's laugh? <laughs> Expo. X. Very good. E. Very good. No, what are some... When, when someone says, man, that thing was growing exponentially, what are they trying to convey? What? Faster... And faster. Okay. What else? Increasing rate of change. I like that. That's getting mathy. Increasing rate of change. So that would be something like this. It increases at an increasing rate. Something like that. But you know what? Something that increases at an increasing rate just means the graph is getting steeper. Yes? We're talking about growth here now instead of if I can spell steeper. <laughs> I can't even do that. Um, you know what else looks like that? X squared looks like that. Okay? X squared kind of gets uh, faster and faster as you go to the right. But is X squared exponential? No, it's not. It's polynomial. X squared is polynomial, not exponential. So there's got to be something else that distinguishes polynomial growth from exponential growth. Did something happen? Yeah, something happened. All right, what else did y'all come up with? Exponent increases? Oh, nice. The exponent increases. That's kind of getting it to something that x squared cannot do, right? Because what is x squared's exponent trapped as? Two. It's trapped as a two. Whereas an exponential function, maybe the exponent does change. That's that's pretty good. What else? What did you come up with over here in this dark, sinister corner? Exponential. Kind of a contribution. What else? Have you ever heard anyone say something grows exponentially? Yes. Yeah? I hear it a lot. And is that all? Is, is, are they saying it mathematically, or are they saying it as an adjective? I'll get it out of the way. What else? What else? Anyone? Uh -huh. Golly. First period, they were half asleep and they had y'all beat. How does it make y'all feel? All right. How about this? Let's, let's, let's talk about this then. What are some things that you have heard or know who have been described as growing or decaying exponentially. Half-lives, half okay, that's good. I guess it'd be half-lives. Uh, radioactive, radioactive elements, right? Yeah, or atoms, yeah. That's good. That's actually truly exponential. We'll talk about why here in a second. So that would be growth or decay. Mikey, growth or decay. That would be decay, right? Because something is decreasing. What else? What else have you heard grows exponentially? Money. That's kind of a big one, right? Cha-ching, money. I'm going to use green here. Money, in fact, does grow exponentially under certain circumstances. Very good. What do you mean by that? Evan, what do you mean? Oh, you said something else there. It builds off, I'm going to go ahead and say, off of the previous amount. Is that fair to say? Yeah, there you go. That's a very important thing about uh, exponential. Now, why is that? When you go to a bank, you put it in there, and what do they say? They say, like, we'll give you $5. Is that how they do it? If you give us $5, we'll give you $5 in return. So, yeah, you'll have 10 Is that how it works? They give you a what? A rate. They give you a percentage rate. And that's important. 
because anything that increases or decreases by a percentage is going to be exponential growth or exponential decay if it's getting smaller. That's critical, all right? What else? Science class. Y'all sit over here, you heard it in your science class. Where did it show up in science class? Like, did they say, hey, class, this is science class. One day in your math class, you're going to be talking about exponential growth. And today we're going to buy, dissect frogs. Is that where it came up? What? Bacteria. Very good. Bacteria. I'm going to add on here bacteria populations. Not like the bacteria themselves, like they grow really big, like, ah, I'm King Kong-sized bacteria. But the population, right? In fact, populations in general, populations in general. Think about cell division, mitosis or meiosis, right? Oh, did y'all, you just said that, cell division. Uh, let's do meiosis, right? Meiosis is the fun one because it, it's the reproduction of your sexual gametes. So we can talk about sex in here. Yeah. 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 You start with one cell, and what happens with one cell? Yeah, it divides and becomes two. And then what happens with the two? The two divide and become four, and the four divide to become eight, and the eight divide to become 16 becomes, 32 becomes, 64 becomes, 128 becomes, 256, and so on and so on. Yeah, so on and so on. So what's happening, what's happening to the population every cycle? It is doing what? Say it louder. It's doubling, okay? Yeah, no, you did. Fist bump. No, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm a fun guy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, doubling is awesome. What about if something triples? Would that also be exponential? Or quadrupled, so on and so forth. So anything that increases by a percentage rate or increases by a scale factor. Anything that increases by a scale factor. Doubling would be a scale factor of two. Tripling would be a scale factor of three. Half lives would be a scale factor of one half, one half, okay? Um, in fact, if you double something, you increase it by what percentage? Nope, 100, yeah. If you double something, you increase it by 100%. You get 100% addition to what you have. So they're really the same thing, two sides of the same coin. Scale factor increase, percentage increase. They are two sides of the same coin. That is what makes exponential, exponential. So if you ever hear it in an adjectival sense, like wearing a uh, Tim Duncan jersey is exponentially more awesome than wearing a Tony Parker jersey, is that really, is that meeting the litmus test of what is truly exponential? Not really, right? You're just using that as like, it's more awesome, right? But you don't really mean exponential because here's what, here's what exponential is. All of these things right here have something in common. And let's look at something that also grows rapidly that is not exponential. Let's look at y equals x squared. y equals x squared does grow very fast, okay? And it gets steeper and steeper as you go out to the right. So... It kind of meets a lot of the criteria here, but none of these things that we mentioned up here can grow according to x squared. Why? The origin. Fantastic. What about the origin? Absolutely. Polynomial growth, like x squared or x cubed or something like that, they can grow out of nothing. They can grow out of zero, out of the origin. Exponential things cannot grow out of the origin you have to have an initial value, right? Greater than one, as you said. So we call that the seeding value, or we'll just call it the initial value. That would be very funny if you went into a bank and you said, I'd like to open an account. Like, great, we pay 5% interest per year on savings account. How much would you like to deposit? Zero dollars and zero cents. And you walk out the door, right? And you come back a year later and you're like, give me the money. They're going to be like, huh, what money, right? You don't have any money. It can't grow out of nothing, right? Think about populations, right? 
Can you start a population if you start with zero? No, there had to be a seeding value, right? There had to be, if you're talking about bear populations, there had to be not just an Adam bear, but an Eve bear, right? Sometimes you need two seeding values to start the process, right? With mitosis, though, you only need what? One, right, because it becomes two. But exponential growth or exponential decay cannot grow out of zero. Excellent insight, whereas polynomial growth can. You're in statistics, Knuckles. Have you gotten to the part yet where you're looking at scatter plots and you're trying to decide what model best fits it? You haven't done that yet, okay? That's one of the things they do in statistics. One of the criteria when you're looking at data that appears to grow is you're looking at the situation and saying, can it grow out of zero? If so, it might be cubic or quadratic, or can it not grow out of zero? Does there have to be a seeding value? And if so, it's going to be probably exponential. That's one of the criteria. You'll also do residual plots and all that other good stuff. Okay, so that's one factor about exponential. Now, I drew it on the right-hand side. Exponential does continue on to the left side here for growth, and there is a horizontal asymptote that affects the graph on the left side. So this might be, instead of x squared, it might be 2 to the x power. Okay, so what do you notice the difference is between quadratic x squared and exponential 2 to the x? Not only does the exponential start at 1 or something, but what? Yeah, getting at what Evan said earlier, the variable is now the exponent, which means, as he said, it can change. It can change, all right? So it's kind of flipped. The base is a number. The base is a number. We call that the base. And the exponent is the variable. Or we call that the exponent. And when your variable is the exponent and you have a numeric base, we call that an exponential function. All right? If you have a variable base and a numeric exponent, it's a power function. If that exponent is a positive integer, it's a polynomial. But it could also be like x to the one-half, x to the one-third. Those are power functions in general. Now, what's kind of funny is um, in the short run, x squared is going to outgrow 2 to the x. I mean, in the very beginning stages, notice the exponential starts at 1. But very, very soon after that, x squared is going to intersect the graph of 2 to the x and take off a lot steeper. But you know what happens in the long run? As we go to the right, guess what 2 to the x is going to do? He's not worried at all because eventually he's going to get so steep further down the line that he, and, and I'm going to draw it kind of wrong, but eventually, eventually the exponential function is going to overtake the quadratic, okay? And that's true in the long run for any exponential growth versus any polynomial. It's good now? Yeah, it's perfect. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so in the long run, and it may take a while, in the long run, any exponential growth function will overtake any polynomial growth in the long run, okay, which is very relevant for you all because of that right there. <clears throat> there is something, a concept called the time value of money, <clears throat> which means that the longer you can wait for money that is earning interest at a percentage, the better off you're going to be in the long run, down the road, all right? Because let me draw, let me draw it in green. You may, you may go to the bank and put an initial investment in, and it's going to grow slowly at first. But because it's exponential, it's going to get very, very steep down the line. So if you start investing early, okay, you should start investing as soon as you start making money. And by investing, I don't mean necessarily stock market, but I mean like investing for your future, like college education maybe for kids you don't even have. As soon as you get that job out of high school or college, start putting money away regularly that's earning interest because you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. And it's growing very slowly at first. But when you get out here, like towards your retirement years, this may be like 60 or 65, if you can wait just one more year towards the end, notice your money is going to grow very rapidly towards the end. So the sooner you can get into the investing game, 
right here, then you're going to get to that extreme part of the curve when it's time to retire. If you start investing late, okay, let's say you start investing not at age, let's say 20, okay, so by the time you're 60, let's say you start investing at age, oh, crap, you need to start investing at age 40. Now 60 is going to fall right in here, right? So that's just kind of a life lesson. Start saving as soon as you start making money. I started saving for my kids' college education before they were even born, okay? And now my son's in school at Baylor, and I'm very, very happy that I did that. Time value of money, okay? Um, so let's see if we can come up with um, kind of an intuitive understanding of what exponential growth uh, is. Um, this right here that Evan said was kind of interesting. It builds up the previous amount, okay? Because if you're doubling something every cycle, it depends on what you had previously, all right? So let's say you go into a bank and you put in $1. Here's the bank. You go into the bank and you put in $1. And let's say the bank is offering 5% interest on a savings account. And then the guy behind you comes in and he's driving his Range Rover and he puts in $100,000 at the same account, okay? Time passes and then one year later, you both arrive at the bank at the same time. Kind of weird. Maybe this guy's following you. You come back to the bank one year later, and you're like, give me my money. And now they're like, okay, calm down, sir, because you know you put money in this time. You're not expecting money back when you put in nothing. You know you invested, and you're like, yeah, get me my money. Well, they're going to say, okay, sir, you'd like to close your account? Here's your balance. What is it? One dollar and what? Five cents. <laughs> You earn 5% of a dollar. Now, some people might say that's pretty good because you did absolutely nothing for a whole year. Nothing. And you showed up a year later and you're a nickel richer. That is awesome. You can get rich doing that if you waited like a million years, right? We don't have that much time. The guy that put in 100 grand is right behind you. Um, and he drives up this time in his Porsche Carrera that he just picked up from the dealer for his daughter for her 15th birthday. She can't even drive yet. And he's picking up how much money when he closes his account. What's 5% of 100 grand? What's 5% of 100? Five. So 5% 5 of 100,000 is 5,000. So he's closing his account. He's still getting 5%, but how much did you make? A nickel. How much did he make for doing nothing? 5%. And it's because it's building on the previous amount. Anything that it doubles or percentage relies on the current amount. So the less you have, the less you're going to get, right? And the more you have, the more you're going to get. That's pretty cool. The rich get richer. It takes money to make money. So that is the kind of intuitive idea of exponential growth. The more you have, the more... You have the current amount, comma, the more you're going to get. The rate of increase is greater. And to go back to Mikey's example of the half-life, this would be for growth. It also works similarly for decay. The less you have, what? The less you lose. The less you lose. That would be for decay. So let's talk about exponential decay because it does show up in science classes. Uh, you have these radioactive versions of elements. Yeah, yeah. Some elements are not stable at all, but some stable elements have radioactive, unstable versions of themselves. And they, if they're not renewed, they lose their mass at regular intervals. And we typically measure it in half-lives, right? So every blank amount of time, it's going to lose half of its mass. So it goes from 8 grams to like four grams, down to two grams, down to one gram, down to a half gram, to a fourth gram, to an eighth. It's losing half of its mass. And the one that you're probably most familiar with is carbon, right? Y'all heard of carbon dating or carbon? What's the radioactive isotope for carbon or the unstable isotope? 14, right? Carbon 14. Carbon 12 is stable. Carbon 14 is not stable. Carbon 14 has a half-life of about what? You science people. 5,700 years, give or take, about 5,700 years. 
So what does that mean? That means every 5,700 years, uh, the carbon-14, if it's not renewed, will lose half of its mass. So how do they use that to, use to do dating? Well, is, if an organism is alive, it has carbon, and it also is renewing its carbon-14, which happens when the sunlight affects things. We, we eat things that are affected by sunlight. Uh, the carbon-14 is renewed. But as soon as that organism perishes, the carbon-14 is not renewed. But the carbon-12 stays stable. So if you find like a, an old organism or something, you can measure the amount of carbon-14 it currently has in it and compare that to the amount of carbon-12 that it has. Okay, and then by comparing the two and knowing that carbon-14 has a half-life of about 5,700 years, you can determine more or less the, the age of the organism, or at least when it died, right? So that's pretty important. Um, now think about this. Why also does it work? If you look at exponential decay, it looks like that. If you keep taking half of something, half of 10, half of half of 10, half of half, 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 will you ever reach zero? No, you'll never reach zero. And that's why the decay functions have a horizontal asymptote out here for positive values of time. You're always going to be left with what's called a trace amount. You'll never hit zero, half of something, half of something. So it's just a matter of do we have the tools that are sophisticated enough to measure that small trace amount? And then if so, we can, we can roughly determine how old it was or, or uh, how long it died, how long ago it died. So that's how carbon-14 works. Some um, radioactive isotopes have really brief half-lives, like we're talking seconds, like Einsteinium is very, very, very slow. Other things like radium that are toxic to people, they have very long half-lives. And why is that important? Five Mile Island, Fukushima, Japan. What's the most famous one? Chernobyl, right? Nuclear reactors. The cores melt and they release radioactive, harmful radioactive isotopes into the atmosphere and it's unsafe for people. There, there's actually a Twitter site that I follow and it's called Is Chernobyl Safe? And every day they tweet and it says how, what, what percentage is it safe to go back to Chernobyl? And right now it's at like still one point something percent. So every day they update it, but the decimals are way down the line, one point something, something, something percent safe to go back to Chernobyl. Okay, and it's because of those radioactive uh, isotopes. In fact, Mr. Johnson, prior to wanting to become a math teacher, worked on nuclear submarines, and he dealt with radioactive uh, isotopes all the time. What would you like to say? Anything? I'll get close to you if you want to say it. Oh. Just, just the, the half-life of uh, uranium for what we dealt with was uh, 5.27 years. 5.27 years. Yeah. So the fission product. So when uranium breaks apart and causes fission, the byproduct, the one we care about, cobalt-60, is 5.27 years. So every 5.27 years, it loses what? Half. That's right. Yeah, so he was, he was telling me an example of they had a storage room and they had some radioactive element in there and um, they had, it was, it was, they put it at the back of the room but they had some big object in front of it that was kind of a shield for some of the radioactive element and uh, years later after it was in there, some people came along and like, you know what, we need to move that box which was acting as a shield uh, and what happens of course if you move the box Without thinking, like, oh, it's just a box. It needs to go over here. You've now taken away that shield, and now if it's not safe to be around that radioactive isotope with the shield gone, you're now subjecting people who are in that area to that possible radioactive um, element, okay? So I don't know. That was a real concern that he had. Um, and then you have to know how many years it's been there, you know, to be able to determine if it's safe or not. So that's a very real thing, um, you hear about these disasters that happen quite a bit. As we work through the notes, there is, there is an example of Chernobyl that I actually wrote up as, as, as an example, and we'll, we'll look at some of the stuff for Chernobyl. So anyway, there you good. Uh, there you go. Sorry. There you good. Are you good? There. You're good. Here you go. The more you have, the more you get, or the less you have, the less you lose. So um, we've already said that. We've already said that. We've already done this. Okay, so here's the formal definition of exponential growth or decay. An exponential function is of the form f of x equals 
A times B to the X, where A is not zero. This A right here is your initial value. I have it labeled down below. Um, but it's also your vertical dilation factor. If you're thinking about just transformations, you put an A in front, that's a vertical stretch or a vertical compression. But it's your initial value, and of course on the graph it's your y-intercept. So when we're thinking about applications of exponentials, A is your starting value, it's your seeding value. Um, B is the base, and of course X is the exponent. Now B is a number, and it can only take on these values. It can only be greater than 1 or between 0 and 1. Greater than 1 would be like 2 or 3. That would be exponential what? Growth. And if it's between 0 and 1, like a half or 2 thirds or something, that's going to be exponential decay. So notice the base can't be 0. Why can't the base be 0? What's 0 to a power? Times 0 times 0 times 0. That's 0. It doesn't grow at all. And the base actually can't be 1. Why can't it be 1? What's 1 to the second, 1 to the third, 1 to the fourth? It's 1. It doesn't grow either. And it can't be negative. That's important. Because if you raise a negative number to real number powers, x can be any real number, it's, it, it's not going to work, okay? Because of the well-ordering principle, there's infinitely many values. And if you try to raise a negative number, sometimes it's undefined, sometimes it is defined. So you can't have a negative base. All right, so here are some examples of exponential functions. Here's what they look like in the equation form. f of x equals 3 to the x power. Why is this one exponential? The base is greater than 1. It's a number. And what about the exponent? It's a variable. Good. So we need a numeric base and a variable exponent. We got that. So uh, the base is 3. So this would be growth. What is the y-intercept here? What's the initial value? Is it 3? It's 1. Good. You can either think of it one of two ways. You can think of there being an implicit 1 in front, right? 1 times 3 to the x, so 1 is your a value. Or how do we find y-intercepts by computing? You plug in a who for what? For y-intercepts. 0 for x. So f of 0 is 3 to the 0 power, which is 1. Yeah, so that's the y-intercept. Okay, cool. Here's another exponential function. 2 times 10 to the x. It's exponential because we have a variable exponent. What's the base? 10. So this one grows faster than 3 to the x, something that increases by a factor of 10 every cycle. By every cycle, we mean integer values of x. x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 3. Okay, so that's why we say like 1 year, 2 years, 3 years. But x could be any real number. And then what is the initial value? 2, right? That's your y-intercept. Good. Can you call that 20 to the x? Can you combine those? No, you cannot. Absolutely not. Nope. Because your dear Aunt Sally says PEMDAS, right? You have to exponentiate before you multiplicate. Is that a word? Multiplicate. Multiply? There, multiply. you got to exponentiate before you multiply. PEMDAS. What about this fella? He is an exponential function. You have a variable as an exponent. What's the base? One half. It's less than one. So this would be exponential decay. This would be like a half life. What is the initial amount? Four. Okay. So that's your. that would be like having a sample with four grams, and then every cycle, whatever that is, whether it's, you know, whatever, x equals one, x equals two, it's going to lose half of its mass. I'll show you how to modify the exponent if the half life isn't just one. If it's every, like, 5,700 years, we'll modify the exponent so that every multiple of 5,700, you lose half, right? We'll do that later. Okay, so now that you know what they look like, example two says determine if each of the following is an exponential function, E for exponential, or not an exponential function, N. So go ahead and do the first line, A through E, on your own, A through E. E for exponential and for not exponential.
All right, let's see how you did. Letter A, E or N? E, good. The base is 7, the initial value is 1, the exponent is the variable. Good. How about this one, x to the 7? No, this is a polynomial function. Okay, so it does grow fast, very rapidly, but it grows out of 0, and it actually overtakes 7 to the x in the beginning. 7 to the x does not care. It's going to pass it down the line. All right, what about this guy? It looks like it could be. It has the requisite variable for the exponent, but what is the base? It's x, right, which could take on any number, and the base has to be greater than 1 or between 0 and 1. So you do have to have a numeric base. So this one is actually no. This function belongs to a family of functions called the Aleph, Aleph function. You have Aleph naught, which is N-A-U-G-H-T, Aleph 0, essentially, then Aleph 1, Aleph 2. There's other members of this family, x to the x to the x, and then x to the x to the x to the x. These actually grow much faster than exponential functions. These are like the queen of growth. All right, so Aleph, that's kind of an interesting word. Have you all seen that before? Did anyone choose that as your word of the day yesterday in advisory? Our word of the year is Aleph. What does that mean? I don't know. Any Old Testament scholars in here? Old Testament? No? Sure. <laughs> All right. You've heard of the Old Testament. It was originally written in what language? Hebrew. Good. So Aleph ends up being the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet. So was it the, the Hebrews who discovered this function and gave it the name Aleph? I'm not sure about the history. I just know the name. So it's kind of interesting. That's the Aleph function. It is not exponential. What about this rascal? We have a variable exponent and we have a numeric base, but what about that plus one? It actually still works. This is going to be a transformation of the parent function 15 to the x. That plus one just moves it to the left one. It's fine. Now, if you want to actually see, here's the ultimate litmus test. Can we write it in this format? And the answer is... Heck yeah, let's do that. We know how to manipulate exponents. That's negative 2 times 15 to the x plus first power is the same as 15 to the first times 15 to the x power. Yes, yes? Yeah, verify. Go the other way. When you're multiplying and the bases are the same, you don't leave the exponent. You add them. Good. x plus 1, x plus 1. And so now, negative 2 times 15 is negative 30 times 15 to the x. So these are equivalent functions. And now we have it written as a times b to the x, so it is exponential. Now that negative is going to reflect it across the x-axis. And so you end up with the function that's modified. You can have modified exponential. It looks like that. Okay? And there are situations where things that grow exponentially cannot continue to grow exponentially unchecked forever, right? As time goes on, where is that arrow pointing? To infinity, right? Can populations grow infinitely large? Population numbers wise? No. Because we live on planet Earth. Can planet Earth support infinitely many people? No. Everything has a carrying capacity. Can a forest of bears support infinitely many bears? No, of course not. Can a petri dish full of bacteria or a knee full of bacteria support infinitely many bacteria? No, pretty soon they're going to start crawling out of the knee and get real pussy, and you're going to have to squeeze your knee to milk out the pus to make room for more bacteria. I had to do that, sorry. I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had really bad knee problems, a lot of infections, and, of course, compound fracture, don't say it. So, no, <laughs> things that grow exponentially cannot always continue to do so unchecked. So that would be something like this. This uh, upper horizontal asymptote would be a carrying capacity. Carrying capacity. It's kind of your limit to growth, right? Every ecosystem or environment has maybe some undetermined carrying capacity, but there's a limit to how much it can, can hold. What's the maximum population of planet Earth? I don't know. Are we there yet? I don't think so, right? We could start building parking garages so that we all have a place to park eventually. But whatever, I don't know. 
What about this fella? Yup. Yup, he is. The base is what? Pie, yeah. And and I took it for granted that people would know what pie is, but it is 3.14. You should know what pie is. Pie is 3.14. So this is growth or decay? It's growth, right. Um, I had a student one time. He got a he got a tattoo of pie on the back of his neck. Here's his head. And he got pie. Here's his hair. Here's his ears. This is the back of his head. He got a tattoo of pie on the back of his neck. He memorized pie to 300 digits, which is pretty impressive, 300 digits, right? But the world record for pie memorization recitation is like 10,000 digits. So, wow, don't be getting a tattoo if you only memorize Pi to 300 because that thing ain't ever coming off. Wait till you get the world record, and then maybe a Pi, maybe somewhere where you can cover it up. Yeah, Zach Klausner, if you're listening, I love you, man. But uh, I don't know if you realize, I don't know if you realize at the time that that thing was permanent. All right, all right, Zach Klausner, good, good guy. All right, um, all right, do the next row. Next row, F through J. You already did it, okay. Way to get ahead. Overachiever. Letter F, E or N? E. <laughs> it has the variable exponent. It has the numeric base. But it's a 1. What's 1 to any power? 1 to the first, 1 to the second. 1. Does that thing grow or decay? No. Remember, the base cannot be 1. So this is actually neither. This is equivalent to 3. This is equivalent to the horizontal line 3. This is a guy trying to sneak in to the exponential club. He hears it's fun inside. But he's not exponential, so he puts on a fake mustache, and you, if you call him exponential, let him in the door. You were the bouncer, and you let him in the door. He's not. He doesn't grow at all, okay? Just because you're wearing a mustache doesn't make you Tom Selleck. And why does the new Magnum not have a mustache? That bothers me. Letter G, exponential or not? What's the base? The base is just 3. Good. This is the same as negative 1 times 3 to the x. And your Aunt Sally says exponentiate before you multiplicate. Right? So this is actually exponential. So if you want it to be negative 3 as the base, you better put your parentheses around it or it's not going to be negative 3 as the base. Foreshadowing. What about this one? No. This one is not. Because now negative 3 is in parentheses. When you raise negative 3 to real number powers, like positives that are even, it's going to be undefined. Odd is going to be defined. Fractionals. If you put this in your calculator in Y1, put on your safety goggles, and take a step back before you hit graph, because it's going to do funky things if you put that in your calculator. I don't want to be there. What about this one? Zero times zero times zero times zero. He's trying to get into the club. Nope. We've had training, right? We've had bouncer training. You know not to let non-exponentials into the exponential club. What about this fellow? Yeah, he's kind of coming in kind of wompy, but he's like, can I get in? He's like, sure, dude. You're exponential. Thanks, man. Because this is the same as three times four to the positive x. And you do not restrict the domain or change the function by bringing it to the denominator because it's never zero. So that's why it's equivalent. Sometimes if you change the domain, you've got to be careful. This one is exponential. Okay? 
His walk is a dance move. All right. We're done for today. Practice, practice, practice on the worksheet.